Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I'm the Director of Education and Research Techniques. In this video, we are going to learn how to make a poster using LaTeX. So, as you know that LaTeX has many beautiful features that extend beyond just making, you know, text and beautiful books and articles. It can also make such visuals as posters, you know, to provide information for people. Um, so, when you do this, you have to keep in mind that you must plan in advance what it is exactly you want to try to input into the computer using coding. Otherwise, it could be rather chaotic and very, very frustrating. So I'm going to show you the end product so that you know what it is that we're going to choose to design today. So if you see right here, this is our goal. Uh, at the top, you have our heading, the author right here, and then you have these two columns right here. Notice how column one has the two blocks and column two only has one block. Um, also, if you see here um, in column one with the block A and the first block here, you can see that there's a little bit of complex stuff here. We have this um, slightly different colored section right here, and then we have like a little small box within the, within the big block, if you will. Um, so we're going to learn how to do this. Now, as I mentioned, you must plan what you want to do with the visual, vis visualization before you try to put it inside the computer. You can draw it on a piece of paper, you can use Microsoft word if you want to try to create it before you move it over into LaTeX. However, however your brain works, but you must plan in advance. In, in uh, website design and e-learning, we call this wireframing, and I'm sure there's a similar term in other domains and disciplines as well. So why don't we go ahead and get started with making our actual uh, poster. So here we go. We're going to start by setting up our document class like so. And so we're going to set the font size at 25 points, A1 paper like so. And we're going to actually set up our actual document class. So tick Z poster, like so. That's what we're doing. And then we're going to set up our packages. So one package we're going to use is the graphics package. This will allow us to import images into our poster. And then um, we have to set the graphics path. Now, every computer is going to have a different graphics path because you have to, for yourself, decide you know, where your images are at. So for he, for me, this is where my images are going to be. Like so. Then, of course, we got to, you know, tell it the theme we're going to use. So we're going to use the Ray theme for our actual poster. And another package that we're going to use is Lipsum. Lipsum is going to give us dummy text. That's the purpose of using that package. Very convenient so you don't have to make up a bunch of text. And we also need a package that will allow us to make these columns. Notice how I have these two columns. We need a package for that. So we're going to use a package again. We're... And we're going to call th this package is called multi column, like so. Now, everything we just put in is our preamble. For those of you who have watched prior videos, this is like all the code that we need before we actually start making our document. <clears throat> so now we're going to be, um, create our actual environment where we're going to make the poster. So I begin the document and I end it. And now we're ready to get started. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this nice little title at the top with the name of the title, name of the poster, and the actual author. So we're going to do title like so, and we're going to put the name of it. This is amazing, like this. And then we're going to put the author, and the author is ERT Blogger, like so. That's what we're going to do there. And then we're going to put the command make title so that everything is nice and clear. And so one thing I forgot to mention is that as we go through making this poster, I am not going to put all the code in at once. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a piece of code like what I've just done. Then we're going to run it, see what we have so far, and we're going to continue to add to it. So here we go. Let's see what we got. Oh, I misspelled Ray here. It's, it's Ray's. Let me fix that. Try again. And I forgot to put the E at the end of theme here. Sorry. Try again. There we go. So here it is. This is the amazing ERT blogger. This is what we have so far. And this is using the Ray theme, as you can see. Nice and beautiful. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our two columns. Now, when I set these up, I'll run the code, but you won't see anything yet. And then after that, I will begin to build block A and block B inside the first column. So here we go. We're moving on to the next step now. So we're going to, underneath make title, we're going to create an environment called columns. 
This is the course using the, the multi columns package. In the course, I always end my environments immediately. All right, so we're going to create a column called number one, column one. Now, when you use the percentage sign, it allows you to insert a comment in case you're not aware of that. So the stuff in red will not show up in the actual output. So we're going to make our first column and we're going to set it to 0.65. I'm going to explain this in a second. And then we're going to have our second column. And we're going to set this to 0.35. Now, what is happening here? Basically, column one, the column to the left, is going to take up 65% of the available space while column two, the column to the right, will take up 35% of the space. This is why if you look at our example here, this information here is about twice the width of this information right here. And that's because of how we set up the proportions for the two columns. Um, that's why it, this happened. So if I run this, you're not gonna see anything different, but you can tell if you know there's two columns here that are waiting to have information put inside them. That's basically what's happening there. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create the information for column one. So let's take a look at our final example. We have two blocks inside column one, a block A and a block B, if you will. Now in block A, it's kind of complicated. You have a title just like the other block does, but then you have this stuff in a different color here with the points. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Then you have some nonsense text and then you have, it looks like a block within a block and then some, uh, looks like a math equation. So I'm going to show you how to set all this up piece by piece. Let's begin, shall we? So in column one, underneath this, we're going to have something called block A. And we're going to put this information in there. We're going to have a, use the command block. And what are we going to put? Well, inside the curly braces, we're going to put the title for this block, more examples of law tech. And then we have to create the environment where we're going to put the stuff in the block. I know that doesn't make sense, but just have to trust me for a second. So first we're going to do a big skip because we want some space here. And then we're going to put some information here. You can even put stuff in colored boxes like so. All right, let me slow down. So here's what's happening. We we put our title, more examples of LaTeX, and then we have, you can put stuff in color boxes. Where does this go? More examples of LaTeX is the title right here, and you can put stuff in color boxes. So those two pieces are done. Next, I'm going to put my stuff in this color box right here. Show you how to do that. Now, to make a color box, it's very easy. You're gonna use a command called color box. Not very complicated. And then inside the box, you're going to use create the environment called itemize because we want the two bullets, if you remember. And then I'm going to put point one, point two, and then we're going to end this environment like so. All right, now beneath this color box right here is we have this nonsense text right here. Um, not very compl complicated to make this. We're going to use the argument called lipsum, and we're going to set the option argument to two. The number you put inside the option argument determines how much dummy text you get. Underneath this, we're going to do another big skip to give some space. And now, the last piece for this block A, we're going to create this inner, inner block right here. The title of the inner block is, here is some math for fun, and you can see that it's a, box within, a block within a block, if you will. So that's what we're making right now, underneath the big skip. So I'm going to use the command called inner block, because it's a block within a block. Here's the title of it. Here is some math for, for fun, like so. And now I have to uh, begin what I wanna put inside the actual block, so I use begin here. And I want to center it like so. And now to create an actual, you know, math problem to, to, use, to use the math tag, we have to use the dollar sign uh, two to the fifth power plus five x minus the fraction here. That's what frac means. That's an arc. That's a command. Two 
that's the numerator. X is the denominator times three equals Y, and then we're gonna finish it like so. This should be a times right here. All right, that is what the equation is. Now we need to close out our center environment, and then we need to close off our first little block here. That's why we put those two curly braces like so. So if we run this, you can see that now we have our nice little beautiful block here. And just so everything is clear, more examples of LaTeX. That's right here with line 15. You can put stuff in color boxes. That goes right here with line 16. Color box, line 16, 17, 18, and 19 are right here. And then we have the dummy text here. This goes with line 21, another skip, and then we have the inner block, lines 23 to 26, represented right here. That's the beauty of it. Now, the next step is we need to do our information for block B. This will be much simpler. So all we do now is we put our information here, block B, like so, and this is just a block. And then we have the title called more text. And then inside the actual block is we have a lip sum here. That's the argument that we're gonna use. And then we're gonna use the number one for our optional argument. That's it, very, very simple, not complicated. Had to do that, sorry, I forgot to. Oh, I forgot to put the curly brace here. Sorry about that. Okay, now we're ready. Sorry about that. Okay, beautiful. So we have our more text that lines up with this, and then we have all this dummy text right here. So column one is complete. It looks just like our actual poster if you look here. So the next step that we have to take is we have to go over here and work on our second column here. Um, see if we can get this to work like so. So now we're in column two. And in column two, all we're going to do now is we're going to put a block called more pictures right underneath here. And we're going to give it the heading of, we're going to call it block like normal. And we're going to give it the title, more pictures. Like that, close it out. And now here's what we're going to put inside it. We're going to use the argument include graphics. Um, inside the optional, we're going to set the width equal to line width. That's the, okay. Now to in, to input our actual image, we're going to type in chairs, as you can see right here, because that's the name of the file that has the image inside it. And so we're going to finish creating our block like so. And so when I run this, you can see right there that I now have my two columns right here, column one, column two. Column one has my two blocks, block A, block B, and then of course, this is my second column right here with my picture and some dummy text. Now there's one last piece of information that we need to add, and that is the block going across the bottom. So we're gonna go outside the columns because we're done with the columns, so we're gonna just create a command called block. We're gonna call it the end, like so. And then we're going to, inside this one, we're going to use just the lip sum, like always. And then we're going to use 10 to 11, like so. Then we're going to close it out, like that. And then we're at the end of the document. So we run this. And then voila, there you go. We have our nice, beautiful uh, block across the bottom. So if you look at this poster and you compare it to the original, you can see they look exactly the same. Uh, very, very beautiful. The text is nice and filled up. We have an, a math equation here. We have a picture off to the side, some bullets. This is the beautiful, beautiful power of LaTeX. And the beautiful thing about the poster is, is that everything is lined up perfectly exactly how you want it. Yes, you can make posters using, you know, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft uh, Word if you want, but you got to have a very fine hand to make sure everything is lined up. If you ever tried to 
you know, put blocks in by hand, it's very hard to make sure everything lines up evenly. Of course, some people can't do it, but with LaTeX, with the code, everything is lined up beautifully and perfectly. So in this video, we learned how to make a poster in LaTeX. It's rather a complex process. The most important thing to remember is design what you want beforehand on a piece of paper, on a whiteboard, whatever. After that, you can learn the code through accessing sources on, online, finding videos, etc., and then set things up as you want. So in this particular uh, poster, we had some bullets here that we created using the color boxes. We had an inner block right here. We had the two columns like so. We had some dummy text right here. We even put in a picture. And lastly, we had a block going across the bottom. That's how we did this particular poster. But there's many, many more ways to do this. So we want to thank you for watching. Uh, thank you very much and take care.